It was the second day in the country. While on our way to pick up Hermes at the car park after lunch, Kino encountered a bickering couple in front of the motorad. They appeared to be a married couple in their thirties, and beside them stood a boy, about ten years old and looking more than a little lost. The father spoke. You're being overprotective. The mother retaliated. No, you're being stubborn. This is for his own good. The three were blocking her way to Hermes. Kino began by clearing her throat. <clears throat> Before she could manage to say, Excuse me, may I pass through and get my motorad behind you? The father noticed her and asked, What do you think? About what? I didn't hear the conversation. Kino cocked an eyebrow, amused by the sudden question. But before the father could explain herself, the mother interjected. This stubborn man insists that our boy doesn't need a bulletproof vest. Why would he need something like that? asked Kino. The war, of course. Our son is joining the army, replied the father. Yes, it broke out a few months back. It is the first one we've had since this country was founded. The army has been recruiting soldiers for the front lines. My son will be joining the army today. Not to boast, but he will make a fine soldier. Probably will return a hero too. But this foolish wife of mine keeps insisting that he wears a bulletproof vest. What nonsense! Honey, the vest will protect our son from shrapnel. He just needs to crouch down to avoid that. Not to mention there are trenches to take cover in. Even so, it will protect him from all sorts of things. He can't be a hero if he gets hurt. But won't the vest be heavy? He can't move freely if he's bogged down. Soldiers have to have the grace of a butterfly and the sting of a bee. Also, his squad will ridicule him if he's the only one wearing it. All he needs to do is to say it's a gift from his loving mother. After listening to the parents, Kino glanced at the boy and said in a careful, neutral tone, Why don't you ask the boy's opinion? You're right. What do you think, Timmy? You will listen to Mummy, won't you? The mother bent down and gently placed her hands on his shoulders. The father also squatted down next to him and held up an encouraging fist. Come on, son. You're a man, right? Real men don't need this junk. Don't worry. Mummy and Daddy will respect your decision. That's right, boy. The boy answered with a quiver in his voice. I... I don't want to go to war. The father stood up immediately with a tone completely different from before. We're doing this for your own good! The mother also stood up and stared down at her son. You need to join the army and become a hero. That way, you'll be able to enter a good college and university. And then you will get to work for a large company. Don't you understand? We are doing this for you. Didn't you say everyone in your class was joining? Do you want to lose them? Is it okay with you to get left behind? But Johnny's parents won't let him go. The mother began to raise her voice at her son. What Johnny does is not our problem. You should decide for yourself. That's right. You shouldn't compare yourself to others. The poor boy's face went pale with terror after this outburst from his parents. The mother took out a brand new bulletproof vest from her bag. The small vest was still wrapped in plastic, with a card attached that read, To our brave young soldiers, specially designed to reduce stress on the shoulders, now with adjustable height to suit grown children, ideal for long-term use. She half squatted and placed one hand behind her son, gently urging him, Put this on and let's go to the recruitment centre. Don't be scared, Mummy will be with you. Ah, see, like I said, you're being overprotective. I just want the best for our son! I know! Just stop overdoing it! And so the bickering began again. In the midst of this, the boy timidly said again, I don't want to go to war. Ah, oh, not again! Ah, oh, you must have inherited this cowardice from your mother's side! What? He's as stubborn as you are, you old mule! Again the boy protested, now almost crying. I... I really don't want to go to war! Kino interjected her voice still carefully controlled. Maybe you should rethink this with the boy. The parents gave Kino a horrified and insulted look. Oh, why don't you mind your own business? This is a family matter. Yes, this is our problem. Right, Kino nodded. I'll do that. Come on. The mother grabbed the boy's hand and began to drag him away. We should head to the recruitment center before it's too late. We'll decide about the best once we get there. Let's go, Timmy. Kino watched the parents drag their son away. She shook her head and turned back towards Hermes. 
The motorhead greeted Kino as she kicked up the stand. That must have been tough. Kino answered honestly before hopping onto Hermes. Yeah, it was. 